welcome to our show health and wellness myths versus facts i'm gargi rawat made up of the glands that produce hormones the endocrine system regulates almost everything that happens in the body controlling growth puberty processing food and water and maintaining the proper levels of blood sugar the pituitary gland is the master gland controlling all the hormones in the body if the gland does wrong and then goes wrong then people can suffer with a range of symptoms and conditions these are rare and can be tricky to diagnose so more awareness is needed to promote quicker diagnosis and better care pituitary diseases are rare conditions with severe chronic multi organ and multi systemic morbidity requiring complex multidisciplinary treatment and usually lifelong drug treatment we have with us eminent endocrinologist to provide medically accurate advice on preventing various endocrine conditions related to the pituitary gland and help viewers identify long term control strategies we're joined by dr and professor deep datta chairman department of endocrinology asira super special Charity Clinics and Dr. Pankaj Jain, consultant endocrinologist, Pratham Endocrine Clinic, Gwalior. Thank you so much, doctors, for joining us on the program. Uh, Dr. Datta, first to you. Numerous glands throughout the body produce hormones. What are hormones, and why are they essential for the proper functioning of the body? Hormones are chemical messengers which are made by glands. They are released in the blood circulation and they go all over the body carrying vital information. It tells all the different body parts how much to work, when to work. So there are hormones for sleep, there are hormones for appetite, there are hormones for energy, there are hormones to control the metabolism. So they are like the language by which different body parts talk with each other. right well that's an explanation on you know what the hormones do uh, dr jain the endocrine system is responsible for regulating a range of bodily functions uh, through the release of the hormones how does the endocrine system work and uh, why is it the why is the pituitary gland called the master gland uh, endocrine system continuously monitor the amount of hormones in your blood and they deliver their message by locking into the cells and they target uh, where they can relay the message and uh, this is called the master gland because uh, there are many hormones is produced by the pituitary gland like the growth hormone prolactin uh, acth thyroid uh, tsh secretion uh, there is many hormones and it take care of not only uh, the only the pituitary but also the other uh, gonads are whether it is a gonads it is the adrenal it is mon- uh, governed by the whether, whether it is a thyroid gland it is uh, governed by the pituitary uh, hormones so we called it the uh, master gland because it uh, this is a pituitary gland we take care of many other glands in our body so we called it the master uh, of the pituitary gland all right uh, dr datta as we discussed the pituitary gland controls several other hormone releasing glands and damage to the pituitary gland can have a major effects on the body uh, so what can damage the pituitary gland Yeah, as Dr. Sab just now said, it's the master endocrine gland. It controls all the gland in the body. So it is present at a very critical, safe location in the center of the brain. Uh, there is a bony cage where it sits, and there's brain all along to shield and protect it. But still, unfortunate damage can happen. A simple a fall, a head injury, a banging of the head, a road traffic accidents. So any form of injury to the head, even while playing, the ball hits my head hard, and uh, that can damage the pituitary gland. And that damage may not be apparent in a few hours or days. Sometimes it may be apparent even five to ten years down the line. Another important cause is. pregnancy especially in ladies during the time of delivery if they have lost too much of blood so that would have led to a state of low blood pressure and the blood supply to the brain goes off transiently and that can also damage the pituitary gland for certain tumors of the head and neck region we we may have to give radiation to the head and neck region and some of the radiation may unwantedly go to the pituitary gland and that can also damage the pituitary glands similarly lot of different anti cancer therapies are sometimes also known to damage the pituitary glands and there is a very diverse condition called autoimmune conditions where our immune system which typically makes antibodies to kill foreign organisms by some mistake they start making antibodies against their own body parts so if my immune system sometimes makes antibodies against my pituitary gland it will not let it function properly and may leads to its damage 
All right, uh, Dr. Jain, pituitary disorders generally occur when the pituitary gland is either too effective or not active enough. If you could explain this, you know, further to us, what are pituitary disorders? Uh, pituitary gland uh, can cause the increase in, sometimes there is some increase in the hormone secretion, sometimes there is some decrease in the hormone secretion. Uh, as I told, there is a, many hormones are secreted by the pituitary gland. When there is excess, like prolactin, when there is excess, we call it a prolactinoma. When there is excess of growth hormone, we call it acromegaly. When there is excess of ACTH, we call it uh, Cushing disease. And there can be excess of the TSH, uh, we call it TSH secreting adenoma. And uh, gonadotropic uh, excess, excess is uh, not very common. So these are the common is the excess presentation. Sometimes there is a deficit of them. Like then there is a growth hormone deficiency we commonly see in a child having growth hormone deficiency even as the Dr. Datta uh, uh, described when there is some traumatic injury then there can be a uh, growth hormone deficiency even in the adult and when there is a ACTI deficiency presenting as a adrenal insufficiency which is a very uh, emergency situation and sometimes the uh, TSH secreting uh, problem uh, leading to the Central hypothyroidism, which we commonly seen in a postmenopausal, uh, which we commonly seen in a uh, female having a early peno, uh, menopause. Commonly we called it a Sian syndrome. Uh, we see there is a TSS uh, deficiency there, and uh, there is a pan hypopituitarism is there. Not only the TSH is less, there is a deficiency of other hormones. That, that, that is the gonadotropin is also low. Uh, there is a deficit of other hormone like. Um, as we told, uh, cortisol deficiency there, thyroid deficiency there. But all these, if we properly diagnose, these are the treatable condition. If we properly diagnose them, we can having a uh, medicine for all of them. So there is one part is the excess, one part is the deficit. And we have to properly diagnose it. Once you properly diagnose it, then the treatment is very clear in all the hormonal disorders. All right, Dr. Datta, which advanced testing procedures or tests are required for accurately diagnosing a pituitary tumor? Yeah, so uh, pituitary tumors are pretty rare condition. Uh, the good thing about it, they are almost always benign tumors. So they're not cancers. We worried ki if I have a pituitary tumor, is it a brain tumor, right? So uh, not all brain tumors are like the last word. Pituitary tumors are actually pretty harmless tumors. One of the most common pituitary tumors are prolactinomas where the prolactin hormone secretion increases from the pituitary gland. Now prolactin is a milk forming hormone. It is typically increased only in a breastfeeding mother. But if my prolactin level goes up in the otherwise state also in a boy or a girl that can cause milk discharge from the breast that can cause menstrual irregularities in women. So this is the most common pituitary adenoma. Uh, most reliable test to localize, to measure the size, exact feature of a pituitary adenoma would be do a simple MRI of the pituitary gland. The magnetic resonance imaging of the pituitary gland is the investigation of choice. All right, well, we'll slip into a short break right now, but don't go anywhere. We have many more questions to ask the doctors. Stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, let's get to the latest uh, on uh, hormone health and let's return to our doctors. Dr. Jain, can pituitary gland problems be cured? Is it possible to treat pituitary disorders with medication? Uh, regarding common thing regarding the endocrine, uh, if you properly diagnose the endocrine problem, most are treatable. More than 95% are treatable to the full extent. Uh, depend on the uh, pituitary problem, whether it is the excess or deficit, as I told uh, told. Uh, if we know there is a deficit, whether it is a growth hormone deficit or there is a adrenal problem, uh, secondary adrenal problem through the ACTI deficiency or there is central hypothyroidism, if we properly diagnose it, or whether it is a hypogonadism. If we properly diagnose it uh, for the growth hormone, we have a clearly growth hormone that is available and very, uh, very good uh, treatment option. Same for the gonadotropin deficiency there. SCG LHFSH that is by the NA, available by the name of SCG and HMG is easily available and there is a very good result if you properly use them and uh, third one like uh, when there is central thyroid deficiency there 
with the uh, TSH is low, if we give the, give the thyroid hormone, uh, that is easily available, uh, there is a complete uh, treatment of the central hypothyroidism. And when there is central hypothyroidism, we should always rule out the other pituitary disorder. Thing with the pituitary, if there is a deficiency, uh, deficiency of one of the hormones, we should always rule out the deficiency whether the other cells are also damaged. As I told there, as uh, clearly told in the previous thing, there is uh, other hormones is secreted like growth hormone, prolactin, cortisol, uh, ACTH, uh, ACTH uh, leading to the cortisol secretion and TSH. If there is deficiency of one or the hormone and other is the LHFSH, we take care of our pubertal part. If there is deficiency of the one of the hormone, we should always look for whether there is deficiency of the other hormones or not. And uh, as I told, when there is deficiency of the ACTH, steroid, exogenous steroid can be given and that is a completely curable. Regarding the excess, when there is excess of these, like when there is excess of prolactin, that is the prolactinoma already described by the uh, Dr. Datta. Uh, dopamine agonistic is a very uh, good therapy, probably it is one of the uh, uh, pituitary tumor, we didn't need any, uh, most of the time, no any surgical intervention. Dopamine agonistic is easily available, but few of the tumor definitely need surgery, like when there is excess uh, growth hormone is there, uh, we call it acromegaly. In these cases, we need a uh, surgery. That is a transspinodal surgery we commonly do um, through the nasal root. And uh, when there is excess of uh, ACTH with leading to the Cushing disease is there, uh, commonly, it need also needed a surgery uh, that we call the transspinodal surgery. And now, if the patient is not, even after the surgery, if they are recurrent, then medical therapy or uh, um, there is a uh, radiation therapy is also an available option for them. So, when there is deficit, deficit, we can supplement the hormone from the outside. When there is excess, we can give the treatment that can be a medicine part or surgery or radiation whatever, uh, radiation may be gamma knife or external beam, uh, beam radiation. That depends on the patient profile. All right, Dr. Uh, Datta, what is a prolactin hormone and uh, what happens if it's in excess? Yeah, prolactin is a very fascinating hormone. Uh, we all have some amount of prolactin in our body. The normal levels are usually less than 20 nanograms per ml in men and less than 30 nanograms per ml in women. So it's the happiness hormone. It keeps us happy and satisfaction. It gives us uh, in biologic purposes, it levels goes more than 100 nanograms per ml, usually in the postpartum state and in during pregnancy. So this is a, a major milk forming hormone. So uh, a feeding mother needs this hormone to make milk. So in the non-pregnant state and in the apart from the postpartum state, these hormone levels are very low in our body. Now, rarely we may have a pituitary tumor called prolactinoma, which can lead to very, very high levels of prolactin, which usually crosses more than 100 nanograms per ml. Uh, as Dr. Jain said, uh, this is the most common type of pituitary tumor and the best part, it is not a cancer. This is a benign tumor and it is fully curable with medications. If you uh, follow up with your endocrinologist, take the medicine regularly, this tumor will totally melt away and disappear. Sometimes the medicine needs to be taken for maybe two to three years. But prolactinoma is definitely not the commonest cause of rise in prolactin test. Many people, many patients come to us with reports of raised prolactin levels. So we reassure them, see, it is very unlikely you may be having prolactinoma. So what are the common causes of increased levels of prolactin? Uh, that would be, I think, medications. Some med common medications which we use over the counter, like maybe ranitidine or famotidine, the antacid medications, they are known to increase prolactin. So uh, we need to take a good medical history of such people and find out whether are they taking any culprit medicines which are going to increase prolactin, what we know, call them as the drug-induced hyperprolactinemia. So once we have ruled out this, Prolactinoma then becomes an important cause and it's a benign tumor, a fully treatable tumor and the investigation of choice to determine the size of the tumor we already discussed in the previous question which is the MRI of the pituitary gland. Alright, now Dr. Jain if you could explain to us what is the relationship between puberty and the pituitary gland? 
दिस इज ए चेंज इन द चेंज इन द बॉडी टेक्सचर ऑफ द मेल और फीमेल नॉर्मली इन द फीमेल द एज ऑफ प्यूवर्टी इज एट टू एट टू थर्टीन कॉमनली वी कार्ड इट एंड वेन देन द प्यूवर्टी बिगिन बिफोर द एट ईयर इन फीमेल वी कार्ड इट इज ए प्रिकॉशियस प्यूवर्टी एंड इफ द प्यूवर्टी डिलेड बाय थर्टीन ईयर वी कार्ड डिलेड प्यूवर्टी इवन द मीनारकी दैट इज द बिगनिंग ऑफ मैं डिलेड बाय मोर देन फिफ्टीन ईयर वी कार्ड वी हैव टू इवेल्युएट and for the female uh, males we call the puberty age of puberty is 9 to 14 year and for the same if it is uh, before the 9 year we have to evaluate for the precocious puberty if it is uh, above the 14 year there is no development of secondary sexual character uh, we call it a delayed puberty and uh, from the hypothalamus there is secretion of the gonadotropin releasing hormone that by the pituitary leading to the secretion of the lhfsh that uh, cause the development of our secondary sexual character in the male commonly there is a appearance of the increase in the testicular volume penile length increases there is appearance of the axillary and pubic hair and uh, and there is growth spurt is there change in the boys is there appearance of the uh, mustache and uh, other features of the secondary sexual character and in the female there is a appearance of the breast Uh, with the breast uh, appearance is there with the appearance of the axillary and pubic hair followed by the growth spurt uh, these are the common part of the puberty if there is early or delayed puberty definitely there is a, uh, commonly a problem with the pituitary or with the gonads uh, whether it is a primary or secondary gonadal deficiency or excess we have to evaluate through a proper endocrinologist Doctor Datta, if you could tell us what is the anterior pituitary and what are some of the hormones secreted by the anterior pituitary gland? Yeah, so uh, the pituitary gland, as you suggested, has two parts. the The front part is called the anterior pituitary, and the back part is called the posterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary makes four or five different hormones. Doctor Jain has highlighted some of them. Uh, one is the prolactin we have discussed already. The second hormone is the ACTH hormone, which tells the adrenal gland. Now, this is the gland just sitting above the kidneys. So this makes the stress hormone called cortisol. So when we get angry, when you are afraid of something, our face turns red. So it is the cortisol hormone and other catecholamines which is coming from adrenal gland is driving the response. Our heart rate goes up. We start sweating. We have palpitations. So it's the ACTH from the pituitary gland which drives the cortisol production from the adrenal gland. The third hormone uh, is the growth. Uh, hormone the growth hormone is responsible for production of another hormone for, called IGF1 from liver which drives the growth of our bones and that's how the kids keep on growing till maybe around 15 to 18 years of age the fourth hormone is the TSH hormone um, the TSH hormone tells the thyroid gland which is sitting under the voice box in front of the neck to make thyroid hormones like the T3 and the T4 hormones so unless the the pituitary gland makes sufficient tsh the thyroid gland won't know that they have to make the thyroid hormones and we know that the thyroid hormones are critical to maintain the metabolism of our body so that we have sufficient energy production in our body so it's the master regulator it controls all the uh, different glands of our body now this is about anterior pituitary now we have something called the posterior pituitary gland um, the posterior pituitary gland has a major role in regulating the the fluid homeostasis how much water should be uh, there in our body so uh, uh, it secretes the a hormone called the adh or the anti diuretic hormone which takes care of the optimal amount of fluids in the body a typical human adult human body has around 5 to 6 liters of body fluids which is predominantly in the form uh, of blood so if there is too less amount of fluid in our body our blood pressure will fall if there is too much of fluid in the body will bloat up will appear swollen so the adh hormone guides our kidneys and tells our kidneys to how much water to retain or how much water to throw away how much salt to retain and how much salt to throw away so that's the beauty of pituitary gland it's like the big boss it controls all the other glands and make them work together so that the body as a whole becomes very happy it remains happy and efficient Right, uh, Doctor Jain, uh, if you could tell us what are the symptoms of an abnormal pituitary gland? Uh, same thing. Uh, there is a 
फाइव हारमोन ऑलरेडी वी डिस्क्राइबिंग इट सिंस लास्ट ट्वेंटी मिनट देर इज फाइव हारमोन सीक्रेटिंग डिपेंड ऑन विच हारमोन इज एक्सिस ऑफ डेफिसिट वेन देर इज एक्सिस ऑफ प्रोडक्टिन कॉमनली इन द फीमेल इट प्रेजेंट एस ए गलेक्टोरिया इवन डिक्रीज लिप्टो इज देयर इेगुलर मैं देयर सिम्टम्स ऑफ मास लीजन हेड एक मे बी देयर दिस हेड एक और विजन डिफेक्ट इज कैन बी पार्ट ऑफ एनी पिट्यूटरी ट्यूमर Uh, when the size increases, a small tumor can cause the uh, headache. When there is enlargement, take, uh, compressing the tumor, compressing the optic nerve can cause the even the vision problem. So this is the common uh, with the prolactinoma. Uh, like the growth hormone, excess is there. Uh, we know when there is excess, there is acromegaly. We call it acromegaly. And uh, regarding acromegaly, same first is the mass effect causing the headache. Uh, nausea, vomiting, um, followed by change in the vision. Uh, vision may problem हो सकती है. इसके अलावा growth hormone is working on many other parts. Like uh, someone having a secondary diabetic uh, joint pain is there. Increase in the triglyceride is there, and there is a increased growth of the bone mass. So even the mandible goes out. Hand, बड़े बड़े. Uh, there is enlargement of the hands. Enlargement of foot. Change in the footwear size. Uh, if we are wearing the rings then rings being uh, tight there is increased back secretion there is recurrent ear closing is there and when there is deficiency of the growth hormone commonly it is present as a in the pediatric age group uh, with a growth hormone deficit uh, deficit which can be easily uh, rectified by a growth hormone exogenous growth hormone treatment and now going to the third one that is a tsh secreting exogenous tumor uh, when there is tsh secreting thyroid adenoma uh, adenoma as a tumor causing the same symptom depend on their size and when there is deficiency there of the tsh secreting cells then hypothyroidism there we have all the symptoms of hypothyroidism but here if we do the lab test there is decrease in the t3 there t4 is lay, uh, low and the tsh can be low and normal so this is a central thyroid uh, deficiency there and all the symptoms of hypothyroidism that we know uh, whether it is a dry skin goiter is absent this is very clear when there is primary hypothyroidism goiter is there but when there is cent central hypothyroidism goiter is absent and t3 t4 is low and tsh is also low or normal uh, and all the features of primary hypothyroid uh, that we seen in a hypothyroidism seen in a case and having a tsh deficiency and always when they are i told in the beginning when there is a uh, central uh, pituitary hormone deficiency we should always rule out whether the, the other hormone is also deficient or not uh, so when there is central hypothyroidism we should always rule out the adrenal deficiency that is the acth deficiency because this is the emergency situation and can present as a hypotension uh, low bp can present in the emergency department patient with the any illness any sickness patient can present to the emergency department and when there is deficit of the uh, gonadotropin patient can present with a uh, delayed puberty what we call it the delayed puberty or absent uh, one there can be if uh, this uh, gonadotropin deficiency occur after some in the adulthood after some probably some accident or cynic venum uh, injury so in the follow up right. can present with the gonadotropin deficiency with low libido meta features of metabolic syndrome Uh, with poor mustache growth and uh, beard growth this can be secondary presentation also of the gonadotropin deficiency all and right well, thank ACTH you so much doctors we're completely out of time sorry to interrupt you there uh, we'll have to wrap the show but thank you doctors for joining us and thank you all for watching at home